Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So uh, welcome back. So as you have seen, uh, uh, um, very exciting uh, things uh, happening in turbulence. That is, um, uh, so turbulence, uh, uh, the whole mechanics works like this: that uh, the mean uh, or the or the energy of the mean flow, the kinetic energy of the mean flow, is taken away, and that is used for creating turbulent kinetic energy. Okay, and that clearly shows up in this equation that you have seen. Seen that the, the transport equation for the um, uh, the transport equation for the um, uh, for the kinetic energy of the mean flow and the transport equation of the turbulent kinetic energy, where P was acting appearing as a uh, as a sink term for the former and as a source term for the latter. And of course, this is happening through this uh, through this uh, production, which contains the Reynolds stress times the mean velocity gradients, and uh, then it is. Uh, happening uh, uh, well then it is dissipated uh, at the small scales by this thing which is the dissipation rate turbulent kinetic energy dissipation rate. But now how does this happen? Okay, for that we need to go into the turbulent scales and energy cascade. So as you have seen that from the jet image itself from the turbulent jet is that the turbulent motions range in size from length scales compared uh, to the order of the or, or comparable to the to the flow length scales that is a flow length scales can be for a jet can be the width of the jet to the size orders of magnitude smaller. Okay, to the size which is order of magnitude smaller. So the smallest scales, if the if you have a jet like this, okay, the the the, the largest eddies you will see is basically the essentially of the order of the size of the jet. Okay, but the smallest eddies, this then becomes actually cascades into smaller and smaller edges, and these smaller eddies are actually much much smaller. So if this is of the order of say 10 centimeters or uh, this largest eddy for a jet, then this can be of the order of few microns, given the Reynolds number, of course. Okay, so that is uh, how this thing happen. How how does the turbulence convert this uh, energy that is coming into the large scales and how is that going into the small scales. So that is the whole uh, concept of this cascade okay? and the small scales, smallest scales at which this uh, the smallest scales of turbulence will be called the Kolmogorov of micro scales which will come later. So and uh, as you have seen that uh, just from the image from that uh, the jet image we have seen that the scale separation. What do you mean by scale separation? By scale separation we mean that the uh, we can say that the ratio of the largest scales of turbulent motion to the smallest scales of turbulent motion and that increases as Reynolds number increases. Okay. Uh, so what happens is that so at the largest scales we have this say if this L is the largest scale. Okay, and say this is the smallest scale. So at the larger scales, we have the energy containing range. Okay, so uh, we where the energy is essentially injected. Okay, uh, where the turbulent kinetic is injected by the production mechanism, and then it basically travels through a whole range of scales through this range of scale called the inertial sub range, which is essentially we will show that is universal in nature, and until and unless it is dissipated into this dissipation range, for the smaller scale will be the eta. Okay, so this uh, demarcation between the energy containing range and the inertial sub range we will call this as LEI and the demarcation between the dissipation range and the inertial range will go as LDI. Okay, so that is how we, the definitions go. Okay, now kinetic energy as we have seen that the kinetic energy enters turbulence at the larger scales and is then transferred to smaller and smaller scales until at the smallest scales the energy is dissipated by viscous action. Okay. So uh, that is the whole point. Okay, so that uh, kinetic energy enters turbulence at the larger scales and is then transferred to smaller and smaller scales until at the smaller scales the energy is dissipated by viscous action. So uh, this uh, concept was realized by Richardson uh, actually uh, much earlier than Kolmogorov, and he uh, 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 penned down this poem that big holes have little holes which feed on their velocity and little holes have lesser holes and so on their viscosity. So it's a nice uh, uh, poem by which this uh, uh, this whole picture is essentially uh, basically put in. Uh, uh, it uh, uh, is conveyed to uh, 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 to the general audience. Okay, now then the question is that then what is the size of the smallest steadies? Okay, are they universal in nature? Well, how can you relate the size of the smallest steadies to those of the largest steadies? As length scale increases, do the characteristic velocity and time scale increase, decrease, or remain same? These are important questions to answer. Okay, 
and uh, the Kolmogorov hypothesis of local isotropy um, uh, is uh, these are now what we will do is that. So, to understand these things, so we will introduce Kolmogorov's different hypothesis. Okay, basically, we will introduce three hypotheses, and uh, the first hypothesis is this Kolmogorov's hypothesis of uh, local isotropy, and this states that at sufficiently high Reynolds number, the small scale of turbulent motion are statistically isotropic. Okay. And it can be revised to the state that at sufficiently high Reynolds number, the small scale turbulent motions which are away from the walls are statistically isotropic. Isotropic means that you define a statistical quantity which is invariant upon translation and rotation of your coordinate system. Okay. So, that is what is isotropic. So, it does not have any direction sense. So, it is whichever direction you rotate it stays says the statistical the statistics says stays same that is very important. It is not the instantaneous field we are talking about it is the statistical field we are talking about. Okay. So, but the scale has to be much smaller than the energy containing scales. So, that is important. So, you see that is what is very important uh, here. So, this uh, using this we can go to the second Kolmogorov uh, uh, the, or the, the first similarity hypothesis and he says that in every turbulent flow at sufficiently high Reynolds number the statistics of the small scale motion okay, this word is very important. The statistics of the small scale motion have universal form and that is uniquely determined by the kinematic viscosity and the turbulent kinetic energy dissipation rate. Okay, so, this is very important that these are small scale motions are independent uh, of anything are, are, are universal are. So, these three, three words important small scale motion are universal and determined by kinetic energy uh, or, or the kinetic energy dissipation rate and kinematic viscosity, but it is only the small scale motion or the large scale motions. Okay. And uh, so, what does that mean? That means that that small scale motion if we consider the smallest scales of turbulence to be the Kolmogorov Lenz scales and the smallest scales of velocity are the velocity the Kolmogorov velocity scales and the Kolmogorov time scales. So, we can only determine this from this quantity using kinematic viscosity and dissipation rate. So, by dimensional analysis kinematic viscosity is has a uh, uh, has a dimension of meter square per second it is essentially the same um, uh, dimension of diffusivity whereas epsilon is essentially has a has a has a unit of um, you see it is what is what it is, is essentially twice nu times s i j times s i j right. So, this has units of meter square per second. So, this has units of meter per second times meter per second ok. Um, sorry this is not meters per second. So, this is meters uh, this is meter per meter second and meters per meter second. So, this cancels. So, this essentially has a unit of meter square per second cube. So, dissipation rate has an unit of meter square per second cube and kinematic viscosity are a unit of meter square per second. So, then the and whereas this kino this will have a uh, dimension of meters, this will have a dimension of meter per second and this will have a dimension of 1 per second have a, have a dimension of second. So, if so then we using this quantities how can we form this scales. So, this week this can be formed only if it is nu cube by epsilon to the power of 1 fourth. It is uh, if uh, Kolmogorov velocity scale can only be formed if it is epsilon times nu to the power of 1 fourth and uh, tau eta it can be only formed this epsilon by, uh, by uh, uh, dissipation to the power of 1 half. Right, so that is the thing. Uh, so uh, this is the uh, this, uh, this is how the different scales of, uh, of turbulence are formed by uh, eta, u eta, and tau eta. Uh, okay, so these are very important things, and these are essentially universal in nature. So that's what Kolmogorov's claim is, and it's actually turns out to be true. Using this, we can have a very well good definition of, of essentially what are the smallest scales of motion are, and they. But this has to be stat this is statistical in nature, which should not be confused with instantaneous um, observations. Okay, so, the, so far we have talked about that far from the walls small scalar isotropic yes and secondly he introduced the first similarity hypothesis we said that yes uh, when the flow is at large Reynolds number. Okay, so, these are very important all the, this hypothesis holds at very large Reynolds number. So, at uh, large Reynolds number the statistics of small scale motion have a universal form and uh, they are uh, uniquely determined by um, kinematic viscosity and kinetic energy dissipation rate. So, he only talks about uh, small scales what happens at the intermediate scales. Okay. So, at the intermediate scale he says that in every turbulent flow at sufficiently high Reynolds number the statistics of motion of scale L which is an intermediate scale that is which lies between your largest energy containing scale L0 and the dissipation scale which is Kolmogorov length scale which is far away from both. Okay. So, this intermediate scale L which is or, or this intermediate range of intermediate scale L which is far off from 
which is far smaller than the energy containing scale which is of the size of the largest energy containing scale which is of the order of the say the jet width and at the same time which is which is also much larger than the Kolmogorov length scale they have a universal form and that is determined by turbulent kinetic energy dissipation rate only and it is independent of kinematic viscosity ok. So, this is very important. So, the smallest scales are determined by kinematic viscosity and turbulent kinetic energy dissipation rate. Intermediate scales which are smaller than the largest length scales or the hydrodynamic scales. So, let us call this hydrodynamic scale L0 which is smaller than hydrodynamic scales yet much larger than the Kolmogorov length scale those are determined by the turbulent kinetic energy dissipation rate only. Why is that so? Why did Kolmogorov say these things? What does it actually mean? Okay? And as we will see that the second hypothesis is useful in deriving a scaled relationship for the energy spectrum at the inertial range. So, this is what he is meaning. Okay? These are the largest scales like this. Okay? So, this is largest and this is smallest. Okay? In between you have this intermediate scales. So, what you have what is happening is that and this is the largest length scale which is like the size of the combustor or the size of your pipe or something like that L which is the largest flow length scale. This is the large large AD length scale L0. So, production through production turbulent kinetic energy enters into this flow at these energy containing scales okay? through this production mechanism you have already seen that. So, then what happens is that after this LEI when it enters into the inertial sub range okay, it is basically behaves like an inertial system where it is not acted upon by any external force. Okay. So, in this inertial sub range you neither have uh, the effect of viscosity nor you have any kind of an other force. So, this behaves in a kind of an inertial manner. Okay. So, essentially these kinetic energy that comes in okay, enters here these travel through all this length scale until it is being dissipated here okay. and in this range there is no production in these intermediate range there is no production. So, production is equal to 0 there is no dissipation in these intermediate ranges. Okay. Production happens at the largest length scale dissipation happens at the smallest length scale. So, these this full this full range is essentially behaves like a conserve in a in a conservative manner and actually it can be shown that the angular momentum is essentially constant and there is no external torque on these eddies okay? that can be shown, but we will not go into that. So, if there is no source or sink in this in these intermediate scales in terms of uh, in terms of the of the energy flux. So, it means that across the scales the energy turbulent kinetic energy flux at each given length scale remains constant because this is the only point where it is actually coming in and this is the only point where it is being dissipated. Okay. So, this whole breakdown procedure is essentially inertial okay, where this it is breakdown and there is no source or sink in this. Okay. So, there is no production no dissipation. So, this the, the turbulent kinetic energy flux crossing the length scales is remains constant. Okay. Now, then if you have a dissipation process at the end, so then it means that the rate whereas, this dissipation happens at the smallest length scales, then it means that the rate of the turbulent kinetic energy flux which crosses these different length scales must be equal to the dissipation rate. Okay. So, that a steady flow of turbulent kinetic energy across scales can be maintained. Okay. So, then it means this tau L which is the transfer of kinetic en of energy to successively smaller scale that can be equated to the dissipation rate. Okay. So, that is why the dissipation rate is independent of the kinematic viscosity. So, that is why even though the dissipation itself contains dissipation itself is given by twice nu s i j times s i j, but the fact is that because dissipated dissipation is almost an identity that dissipation can be equated to this transfer of energy across uh, successively smaller scales which is the which is uh, the, the transfer of turbulent kinetic energy across these small scales. So, this thing is essentially independent is essentially independent of 
viscosity okay and because dissipation rate has to be equated to the turbulent uh, to this transfer of turbulent kinetic energy this transfer rate this dissipation rate it becomes essentially independent of viscosity though it is you see it is explicitly dependent on viscosity through these things. So, it means that so the only way that can happen is that that if you change the viscosity this this quantity also changes adjusts in such a manner that this whole quantity becomes independent of viscosity. So, that is the whole beauty of turbulence okay that is the whole beauty of high Reynolds number fully developed turbulence. The production happens at lengths at la, uh, production is of turbulent kinetic energy happens at large length scales then this whole turbulent kinetic energy travels through these different length scales okay and when it travels through these different length scales there is no source of sink there is no dissipation mechanism there is no production mechanism at this intermediate length scale so which is the inertial sub range. So, it is untouched this flux is untouched okay flux remains constant across different length scales and then when it goes into the smallest length scales it is essentially dissipated into the into thermal energy and the rate at which this dissipation happens must be equated to the turbulent kinetic energy rate okay. So, consider like a pipe if you the amount by continuity equation the amount of if there is no mass generation or loss uh, through the pipe. So, the amount of mass you put in at one end must be the amount of mass flow rate at the other end. So, it is similarly that is continue to maintain the continuity of turbulent kinetic energy is like which is happening through this this pipe is across different length scales. So, this inner turbulent kinetic energy is passing through this different length scales and is dissipated at the end and this dissipation at the end therefore, can be equated to the transfer or this rate at which this energy is successively formed into small and small scales and that is why uh, this transfer rate uh, becomes essentially independent of viscosity because there is no viscous action in this one and because the epsilon can be equated to the transfer rate epsilon essentially becomes independent of viscosity okay. Though it is very paradoxical in the sense that it is essentially dependent on um, uh, viscosity but the fact is that this strain is adjust in such a manner and that is uh, it depends on um, becomes independent of viscosity actually it can come out here also uh, that why the small scales are formed you see that in the large general number turbulent suppose you consider make a flow more and more turbulent by reducing the viscosity. So, so, this one goes becomes smaller okay, but uh, the thing is that I mean for the if the dissipation rate has to be in, 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 in essentially kept constant okay. So, uh, what will happen is that uh, then the this dissipation rate uh, if the dissipation rate has to be held constant. So, then this SIJ must increase. So, what is SIJ? SIJ is nothing but the gradient of the derivatives of the fluctuating velocities the strain rate. So, that means the strain rates must increase the same strain rates can increase only by by reducing your length scales essentially and that is why that becomes the, dissip the dissipation rate essentially remains the same whereas, your size of the scales becomes smaller and smaller. Okay. So, that is the basically the basic mechanism of turbulence okay. Now, uh, here we can estimate different length scales how do we estimate the large uh, this L uh, length scale essentially uh, the characteristic length scale in the inertial range. So, we can define a correlation function to determine indicate the extents, extent of interaction between eddies and that is defined by this R 1 1 x r quantity which is this uh, autocorrelation function uh, average of u x t times u x plus r which is shifted uh, at the same time divided by the variance of u and uh, this is uh, the autocorrelation function behaves like this okay where that is uh, it is correlated at itself, but this correlation reduces. So, that is the important point that if it was turbulence was noise then the autocorrelation function would have been a peak like this would have been a delta function which is not so okay. So, um, this is then the, the this becomes the length scale here L k uh, and then this becomes the uh, the, um, the, uh, the integral length scale and we can define an integral length scale L 0 essentially as um, 0 to infinity r 1 1 x r dr and uh, we can also identify a characteristic velocity fluctuation by essentially the RMS of velocity okay. So, these are the definitions we will use uh, in the later. So, um, essentially uh, for large general number transfer of energy from large to small eddies is independent of viscosity nu for the range of turbulence and that is the inertial sub range and that is what we have learnt and because uh, the rate of energy transfer you see that uh, we have equated epsilon is equal to tau okay and this uh, tau at uh, at any um, length scale okay now what is tau tau is essentially we can equate it to like uh, if it is entering into this eddy so we can equate it to like turbulent this is energy transfer rate so it's essentially uh, must have units of uh, uh, energy kinetic energy per unit time so we can estimate this as u0 divided by tau0 and tau0 we can write it as l0 by u0 so we essentially can get u0 prime cube divided by l0 
Okay. Whereas, this is the RMS of uh, velocity, this is the integral length scale and this is essentially becomes this. But then we can actually write this as we can write epsilon is equal to um, uh, tau L uh, is equal to u 0 prime cube by L 0, um, L 0 is equal to u uh, any length scale as long as it is in the inertial range divided by L okay, or any length scale k uh, L at any k. Okay. We can we can write this for any essentially any uh, any uh, um, intermediate um, length scale whereas, L k uh, is basically lies between your L 0 and eta. Okay. So, this is this uh, how this equation uh, we can equate the dissipation rate to the turbulent kinetic energy transfer rate across different length scales. So, whatever this quantity even if you define this at, at the large length scale this is also equal to the same quantity at the small length scales as long it is larger than the Kolmogorov length and smaller than the uh, your L 0 itself. So, that is the whole beauty of turbulence and then using this we can essentially uh, uh, show that uh, of course, uh, we have also shown that the that, that dissipation is essentially dominates at a small scale and the Kolmogorov length scale. Okay. Now, uh, turbulent kinetic energy spectrum derivation. Now, one very important quantity in turbulent turbulence is the kinetic turbulent kinetic energy spectrum. <coughs> now, uh, what is that? So, we can define uh, instead of uh, instead of length scales we can define uh, we can also define wave numbers whereas wave numbers k is nothing but 2 pi times the characteristic length scale okay so this is the wave number so we need to define this quantity we want to see how this quantity ek uh, 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 e of k uh, behaves um, which is nothing but the d of small k by d of capital k this is the turbulent kinetic energy and this is the wave number. Okay. Now, for that we can just do the dimensional analysis whereas, k has uh, uh, units of uh, you see k has units of uh, meter square per second square whereas, this capital K has units of 1 per meter. Okay. So, then this guy E k has unit of uh, essentially um, meter square per second square divided by 1 per meter. So, it is essentially meter cube per second square. Now, in the inertial range you have seen that the statistics will only depend on dissipation rate and of course, this quantity can depend on k itself. So, E k, so by Kolmogorov's second similarity hypothesis E k can only be a function of the turbulent kinetic energy dissipation rate and k. Okay. So, by dimensional analysis let us say this is epsilon to the power of alpha and k to the power of beta. Okay. Now, this has units of meter cube second square and uh, okay, let us write down as uh, this thing itself meters cube second square and this is units of meter square per second cube to the power of alpha and this is units of meter to the power of beta. So, using this we can immediately de derive uh, two uh, equations, two algebraic equations that is for equating the dimension of meter. Okay. Uh, we get 3 is equal to 2 alpha minus beta and 2 is equal to equating the dimension of second we get 3 alpha. Okay. So, alpha is equal to 2 by 3. So, epsilon the power of epsilon will be equal to 2 by 3. Okay. So, now if you plug in this we can estimate beta. So, 3 is equal to 4 by 3 minus beta. So, then it means beta is equal to minus 3 3 here minus 5. So, it becomes essentially equal to my minus 5 by 3. So, then it means a k is nothing but the dimension is e to epsilon to the power of 2 thirds times wave number to the power of minus 5 by 3. So, this is the origin of the famous minus 5 by 3 spectrum. So, you see we expect that in the inertial range the turbulent kinetic energy spectrum E k should have a dimension of epsilon to the power of 2 thirds and k to the power of minus 5 by 3 and does it really have it. So, actually it turns out beautifully to be so and this is one of the famous uh, results of turbulence uh, that in fully developed turbulence for different configurations different things channel jets etcetera this is taken from Pope's book actually. So, this has a slope of when you plot it in log log scale this has a slope of minus 5 by 3.
Okay. So, this is the main famous minus 5 by 3 spectrum of turbulence. Okay. So, uh, uh, essentially uh, we have uh, looked into this uh, the whole uh, spectrum and the, the whole uh, dynamics of turbulence, how turbulence can, uh, basically uh, sucks energy from the um, uh, mean flow and then converts into turbulent kinetic energy and then how this turbulent kinetic energy will comes into turbulence at the large scales because of the mean velocity gradients and internal stresses then the, how that cascades into the smaller scale where it is being dissipated. And while it travels to these different scales, we see that the flux of turbulent kinetic energy transfer rate remains constant and because it remains constant, it can be essentially equated to the turbulent kinetic energy dissipation rate and um, uh, using Kolmogorov's uh, first and second similarity hypothesis, we can find out using Kolmogorov's first similarity hypothesis, we can find out the, uh, the dimension or the equations for the, uh, the, uh, the, um, the parametric dependence of, uh, of the Kolmogorov length scale, velocity scale uh, and the uh, time scale on epsilon and dissipation rate and using second similarity hypothesis, we can find out how this energy spectrum will look like. So, that is all for uh, fluid turbulence and using this concept, we will move on to turbulent uh, combustion and that we will take up in the next class. So, until then, thank you very much.